100 years after the Summer Olympic Games were last held in France, the world's premier sports event returns to great fanfare. A century ago, there were few Chinese living in France, and Chinese technology was a long way behind what Europe had to offer. In 2024, the situation is very different. Over the last three weeks, I've been on a journey to discover the Chinese people and Chinese technology that is helping to underpin the Paris Olympics. In this episode, as the games begin, I have the opportunity to witness firsthand how China is supporting the world's largest sporting event. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Welcome, Very good. Thank、welcome. you. So this is、uh, Min Jae. Oh, perfect. Thank you. In order to see the games up close, I need a media pass, and for that, I start the final part of my journey at the Paris Media Center, where I'm greeted by Liu Xingyi. Yeah, good. Very good. Thank you very much. So, are you from China? Are you from here, or? Yeah. So I'm studying here,、uh, and、uh, at the end of my study, I said, "Well, there is this opportunity for being volunteering here, so why not?" So, what motivates you want to be a volunteer?、Um, I would say, well, I I'm from Beijing, so I have when I was like ten years old,、uh, there is that、uh, famous like Beijing Olympics that is really for me. It's a it's a it's a marker for my for my childhood. Because that's the first time I see all the people around the world. They come in Beijing. They, 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 we, we try to show their our culture, and、uh, it gives that very international, very diverse vibes. So that's why I apply. Xin Yi gives me a quick tour of the media center, but I'm eager to get out into the streets. With the opening ceremony quickly approaching, it's time to head to the river. On the way, I receive a message from Jia Xin, a Chinese volunteer I met at the very start of my journey. She tells me she's on duty at the Louvre, so I quickly change course to meet her. She gives me the address of a nearby building, where I found her sitting with a group of volunteers. Hey, how are you? Very good, thanks. We follow Jiaxing out with her volunteer group to her position outside the Louvre. I ask her how things have gone so far and what she expects. Oh, I have made a lot of preparations.、Uh, I have five, three different trainings from right now, and I'm also mentally prepared for to to face a different trainings here. <laughs> with time ticking down to the big opening event. I leave Jiaxing and take my seat along the Seine to witness a spectacular show in the rain. Paris has set up 24 large screens around the city for people to gather as a community to watch the games, prompting the entire city to spill into parks, restaurants, and bars to watch the show. While the Olympics is essentially about sport. Like the world fairs that preceded it, the event also showcases the world's cutting-edge technologies. Chris Tung, the president of strategic development at Alibaba Group, and also the architect of their Olympic partnership, tipped me off about a sideshow Alibaba has planned along the Champs Elysees. The morning of the grand opening ceremony, I messaged Chris, whom I had met in Hangzhou earlier on my journey. And we agreed to meet along the iconic shopping street. Hello, Chris. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Alibaba Wonder Avenue. That's great. So please tell me a bit more about what this this Wonder Avenue is about. Yeah, we are sitting at the southern uh, end of、um, Champs Elysees. Yeah. Which is, as we know, the most popular shopping district of the world, probably.、Yeah. And、uh, we purposely want to place our pavilion here because this pavilion is carrying the future of online shopping. Yeah, show me something about what what's the coolest thing here. Yes, you know,、um, in the future world, we believe human will still be the center of the world. Yes, and AI will be there 
uh, to serve you. Welcome to Alibaba Wonder Avenue, a multi-dimensional online shopping experience straight from 2034. I'm your Alibaba Smart Assistant. Chris guides me through a series of interactive capsules showing case personalized products. I mean, you're here, we're in capsule two, we yeah. call it makeup. Yeah. Uh, we believe in a few years, probably 10 years from now, consumers are not buying from the shops. The tour finishes with a catwalk and a selfie with a personalized avatar that works along with Chris. Okay. I can't stop wondering what the first Chinese migrants who came to Paris to sell stone carvings at the 1889 World Fair would make of this pavilion. Back then, it was the Chinese that marveled at Western technology. Now, it is the rest of the world that stands dazzled. I asked Chris what he hopes to achieve with this pavilion. In a nutshell, we want to present the beauty and power of technology at its best. I take the opportunity to ask Chris how the Ali Cloud broadcasting system was working and whether the new multi-camera replay is being well received. Uh, the, the fact that uh, cloud-based broadcast uh, is the main uh, vehicle for the global broadcast of all, uh, uh, Paris 2024 is a remarkable um, achievement, I think, uh, both for uh, broadcast industry, but also for cloud uh, computing industry. It's day two now of the Olympics, and Paris is buzzing with tourists, athletes, and journalists like me. One thing that has struck me is how much Chinese I've been hearing around the streets of Paris since the Olympics started. As expected, the China team are achieving great things in the Olympic arenas. But I'm keen to see what else is happening among the Parisian Chinese community. I start by contacting Alain, the founder of a Chinese Hanf Association in France. She tells me to meet her at the racetrack by the River Seine, which has been converted into a catwalk. I saw you were busy working early and uh, directing those, the, the, the show, people putting on the traditional Chinese clothes. So what is this ab event about? This is a show of the uh, 50, uh, 50, 56 uh, ethnic uh, of China. And uh, uh, we are wearing different uh, ethnic uh, cost costumes uh, to, uh, to show our different uh, costume uh, culture and to celebrate, celebrate uh, the, the, the Olympic Games in our way, in the different regions. I spot Jia Xing among the performers, and she tells me the tea house I first visited in the previous episode is hosting a Hanfu Olympic gathering in the early evening. I make my way over there. It's an intriguing combination of a traditional Chinese dress, tea, and a screen showing the most accomplished athletes of our time. Yang Ying, the cafe co-owner, kicks off the proceedings with some traditional Chinese games as we await the swimming event where China will compete for medal in the 100 meter breaststroke. I join in the games before sitting down with Yang Ying and ask how the local Chinese are celebrating the event. It's clear that Beijing Olympics left a lasting impression on the Chinese communities across Paris many of whom missed out on experiencing that milestone event in their homeland. Now that the Olympics is in their city, it's their time to shine. Waking up and checking my phone after late night celebrating with the Chinese community of Auberville in North Paris, I received a message from the French luxury brand Xiaomei. The French jewelry company was commissioned to design the Paris Olympic medals 
and I learned that CEO was from Hong Kong. I hurried over to meet him. Hey, Charles. Hi, hello, hello. How are you? Welcome to Paris. Thank you so much. Good thanks to see for, you. Good thanks to see for you. meeting us. Born and raised in Hong Kong, Charles Long quickly rose through luxury brand management in China before making it onto the international stage. In January of this year, he was appointed a CEO of Xiaomei. We meet in a reconstruction of the workshop that was used to design the Olympic medals. I start by asking him the story behind the medals. So we were given a brief from the committee to make a medal that is never seen before in the history of Olympics, to make France shine, and in the same time, integrate one part of Eiffel Tower on it. When Napoleon uh, decided to become an emperor himself to make his coronation, he came to Chaumet for his crowns. So 240 years later, when there's something so important for France again, the country, the state, comes back to us and asks for our participation in this important project. And for this piece of metal here, this is actually one of those, let's say, recycled steel bar from the two Eiffel we use to integrate it here. So what happened is that when two Eiffel was built more than 100 years ago, it was not supposed to be something permanent. So the city of Paris decided to keep it. The thing is, the material was not good enough to last for so long. So what happened is that little by little, bar by bar, section by section, we replaced the original structure, the metal, with a better metal so that it will hold for a longer time. The Eiffel Tower has been a central theme throughout my journey. From its first reveal at the 1889 World Fair, the very same fair that brought the first Chinese migrants to France and established Chinese communities here, to the medals produced by a luxury French jewelry company managed by a Chinese CEO. It's time to return to the tower to meet Lulu again from Tyson Sports who has arranged for me to watch the Olympic judo session using the mats I saw being produced in China. Now we're here, and I look at this mat provided by Tyson Sport. Maybe you can tell me a bit more. Yes, so you can see all the mats is very beautiful, right? Yes, Yeah. colorful as well. Yeah, yeah, we also have the AI chips in it, and you can follow in all the information about our mats, how they product and where it comes from, and also, you can follow in the movement of athletes. So sometimes, you know, tracking their pressures, their movements. So you can take active the application to say all they have. Oh, that's right. Okay. And now, is there anything special about a map? Because, you know, I think it's very important when they're competing, they need to have that grip. So, so is there special material used to maintain that kind of quality for people to compete? Yeah, yeah. We also use some uh, high-tech material for the uh, for the mess. Yeah. That's easy cleaning. Yeah. Kind of antibacterial Anti material yeah, yeah, on the surface. Antibacterial material on the surface, right? Yeah. So that's very easy cleaning and also uh, quick dry. At the end of the session, Lulu tells me the company's founder, Bian Zhiliang, whom I met in Shandong two weeks earlier, is flying in that evening and would like to have dinner with us. It seems a fitting end to my journey, as the 16-year-old Mr. Bian has lived the story we have discovered. From hand sewing judo mats on a raised bed at home to providing the most advanced sporting equipment for the Olympics. It's time to celebrate. It's been a hundred years since Paris last hosted the Olympics, and much has changed. The Chinese, who initially came to sell stone carvings, has since established a vibrant community right across the city. The latest technology that Chinese pioneers once came to learn from the French is now proudly showcased by China across stadiums and event venues. The Paris Olympics has proven to be a great success, in part thanks to the work of the Chinese.